Hello everybody, this is Chris with Overclockers Club. It is 5070 time. Today we've got the GeForce RTX 5070. Uh, I do not have the 5070 Ti just yet. My cards are a little out of order, so when I do get a Ti, I'll be able to compare it. But for now, we're gonna go from the 5080 straight to the 5070. So the packaging here is just like what I had with the Founders Edition 5090 card. Of course, it was bigger because the 5090 is bigger. But it's the same layout here where you've got the top that opens up and then these sides fold out. And that allows easy access to get the card out of the box. And then down here, uh, the usual accessories. So your power connector. And let's see what else is in there. Yeah, power connector. Oh, and a little quick start guide. Now, last year's packaging was recyclable. It was a corrugated plastic, but it wasn't nearly as condensed or compact as this. So you uh, save in shipping costs when you shrink the size down and the weight down. But this is a uh, heavy gauge corrugated cardboard and uh, very robust. And it does a very, very good job of protecting what's inside. In addition to being very recyclable. Now the outside shell here, I guess you could recycle that without too many regrets, but this is a really nice, it's almost like a showcase kind of box. I don't know that I would be uh, too interested in recycling this part, as nice as it is. So here's the 5070. And what I'll do is, let me get out a 4070 here for comparison. Okay, so if we compare the two cards, this is the 4070 from last year. And when we compare that to the 5070, they are the exact same size and shape. There are a few little differences in some of the trim pieces, but uh, of course there's a difference in the fan layout too. But physically they are the same size, so they take up the same amount of space. Now looking at the output side, they are pretty much again identical. We've got a uh, HDMI port at the top followed by three display ports. They're facing different directions, sort of opposite directions almost, but uh, that doesn't really matter. And it looks like the uh, venting section here on the 5070 is a little bit smaller. We've got the uh, output ports here shifted a little bit. They're not right up against the edge like they are here on the 4070. And the fans, again, the 5070, uh, the fan configuration is a little different. We've got the same size fans and the shape of the blades, the number of blades, all of that uh, appears to be the same. But on the 5070, both fans are on the same face, whereas the 4070, we've got one fan on one side and one fan on the other. So the airflow there is a little bit different between the two cards and the 5070 we've got a vented section here on the top as well as the bottom here to let uh, to let air out on the back there's no venting and of course on this side you can sort of see some light through there you can see the heat pipes sort of poking through and on this side you can't really see through it uh, and that would be because your PC board is uh, blocking that so the fan on this side is pushing air through and it looks like the only way out is here on the end, which is good because any hot air you can get out of your case is good. And it's probably uh, exhausting here on the top and bottom vents. The other thing to point out is the uh, way the power connector is. So on the 5070, we've got the power connector sort of tucked in there at a little bit of an angle. So your cable would come in from sort of like the back. And on the 4070, it was just a straight shot right into the card. And there's nothing wrong with this, but it can be a little bit of a problem when you've got cables that have to make a sharp turn and you really wanna keep your bend radius to a minimum uh, on your power connectors or actually your power cables. That's what you wanna keep from, from bending. So let's see if we can get this powered up. I don't think this one has any LED effects. Well, actually right here, this may, I 
I think that lights up. But for the most part, they're pretty subtle with lighting effects on the Founders Edition cards. If we look up here at the 5090, you can see there's some uh, white LEDs there and the logo lights up. So that seems to be pretty standard now with the Founders Edition cards. Okay, so we've got the card powered up. The first thing I do after that is go to my NVIDIA app and get the latest driver installed. And then I come down to the system section, hit the performance tab, and then over here, this little slider, you wanna move that over for the performance tuning, the automatic tuning. And that takes uh, several minutes, but that helps optimize the graphics card. Now, I can say one thing I was wrong about right off the bat is I thought this was lit up, but it is not. So there are no default LEDs on this card. Uh, there is on the 5090. I don't have a 5080 Founders Edition, so I don't know if it has them. This is a 5080, but it's uh, from MSI and clearly <laughs> not a Founders Edition. And I went ahead and fired up my MSI Afterburner to control the temperatures and fan speeds a little more uh, in a custom nature. The stock fan curves here are fine, so normally your fans will be off until the temperature uh, requires the fans to come on. And there's nothing wrong with that, but there's a lot of third-party and proprietary software that will allow you to do that. There's my MSI Afterburner. Uh, Asus has Tweak It 3, I believe. So there are several different software packages that will allow you to get in there and uh, adjust your own fan curves so that you can customize when the fans come on and at what temperature. If fan noise is a problem, any more of these cards are pretty quiet. Uh, and even out here on an open test bench, uh, when the fans are spooled up all the way, you can hear them, but they're not terrible. And once you get your system in a case, uh, that usually quiets it down considerably. Okay, so now I'm going to look at the power usage by the card. We'll look at the throughput here using the NVIDIA PCAT. This is a special device that actually monitors the wattage going through the card as well as the voltage. There are three channels. I'm using the middle channel right now. So the power coming from the power supply leaves the PCAT and goes directly to the card. And there's a special riser down there. Let me get in here so you can see it a little better. That little PCIe riser is what the card sits on, so I actually had to make a couple blocks to support the back of the card and the front of the card there to keep it stable. But this is useful because I can look at the wattage being used here in real time. So you can see the maximum is 267, the average is about 252, uh, while this game, this is Borderlands 3, is sort of running in the background. And I can feel the heat coming off the back side of the card there. But this is a 250 watt card. That's what it's rated at. And NVIDIA recommends a minimum of a 650 watt power supply. So that gives you enough power to cover the card. And one thing I want to point out here, the fans are pretty quiet. And if this was in a case, you wouldn't hear them at all. But right now I'm using the stock fan curve for the graphics card. And that will keep the card uh, cool, relatively cool without spooling the fans up too much. So I'm running at about, uh, let's see, 74 degrees C. So what I'll do now is turn the fans up by using MSI Afterburner. So it's already brought it down about four degrees. The fans were about 88%. Now they're slowly coming down as the temperature drops. So we'll watch this for a couple of minutes and see where it stabilizes. So I've been watching this for a few minutes and it sort of uh, oscillates between 68 and 69 degrees Celsius. And the fans are running, uh, let's see, 78 to 80 percent. And there is uh, definitely some more noise. But like I said, if this was in a case, uh, you wouldn't really hear too much. Now you also have to keep in mind that all of the air that is being drawn in from the bottom side of the card is being dumped right back into the case. And you want to avoid that hot air being recirculated and picked up by the fans on the intake. Uh, you don't get very good efficiency there on your cooling. So it's important to have a case that has really good air circulation and has some good exhaust fans to get the heat out of the case and draw in fresh, cooler ambient air. And you can see as soon as we killed off the game, we go back down to idle, which is, let's see, right around 15, 20, 25 watts. 
and it looks like we peaked out around 275 but that was probably a real quick blip and then we reset this and we can look at the averages now and yeah we're 20 to 25 watts somewhere in that range when the card is at idle okay so the next graphic here this shows a comparison of the 50 series cards that are out right now these are the general specifications you can go to the nvidia site if you really want to dig into the weeds and see the, all of the fine details but the higher level here uh, we've got the four cards that are currently out on the left is the 5090 moving one to the right is the 5080 another step to the right is the 5070 ti and followed by on the right hand column far right hand column there is the rtx 5070 and as you go through this uh, information you can see clearly the 5090 uh, is the beast it has the the highest uh, number of cuda cores uh, your shader cores everything is is at the top of the list there including the memory you can see it has a 32 gigabytes which is just just huge it's twice as much as the next card which is the 5080 so the 5080 and the 5070 ti both share the same amount of memory which is interesting because the 5070 gets a cut it goes from 16 gigabytes to uh, 12. so when you compare the 5080 and the 5070 ti they look to be more closely related than the 5070 ti is to the 5070 if you're just looking at the basic numbers here and unfortunately, I have not had a 5070 Ti show up just yet. So as soon as I get one, I'll be able to uh, take a look at it and stick it into the comparison that I've been doing between the 5090, the 5080, and the 5070. And the other point of interest here is if you look toward the bottom of this chart where you see the total graphics power and the required system power, you can see that the 5090 can draw up to 575 watts. Uh, followed by the 5080, which takes a drop down to 360, and then the 5070 goes to 300. So there's uh, a small difference between the 5080 and the 5070 on the uh, power usage, and then the 5070 goes all the way down to 250, which we just saw a little bit ago here. Uh, we were we were right there at the 250 watt mark. Now the power. Uh, supplies that they recommend the 5090 of course takes the biggest one uh, 1000 watt minimum is what they recommend so that gives you enough overhead to cover the card plus uh, whatever your system would use and then uh, the 5080 takes 850 watts the 5070 they recommend 750 and the 5070 we go down to 650 so it'll be interesting to see what the 5060 uh, what the numbers look like for that card and moving on to the next slide here, this is my test system. The motherboard is an MSI Z890 ACE, supplied by MSI. Thanks to MSI for that. The CPU is an Intel Core Ultra 9 285K. I've got that running at about 5.4 gigahertz. Uh, CPU cooler is an MSI Mag Core Liquid i360. The GPU is, of course, the NVIDIA RTX 5070. I've got 48 gigabytes of uh, DDR5 Kingston Fury Renegade. This is the CU DIMM uh, 8400 is the speed. SSD is a Solidine P42 Plus Gen 4. And the operating system is Windows 11 Pro version 24H2. Okay, so for uh, benchmarks, I'll be doing gaming and synthetic. So first, the synthetic benchmarks, uh, I'll be using Blender. And then 3D Mark, there'll be several different uh, benchmarks within the 3D Mark software that I'll be checking out. Then there's V-Ray 6.0, and then finally Procyon. Uh, there are a few benchmarks I've had to retire because they don't support the 50 series graphics cards. For gaming benchmarks, I'll be using Borderlands 3, followed by Cyberpunk 2077. Then I'll move on to Marvel Rivals. And finally, Star Wars Outlaws. And here is the list of the gaming benchmarks. Uh, on the left is the RTX 4070 from last year. That was a Founders Edition card. The column that's highlighted, sort of in the middle there, is the RTX 5070. To the right of that is the red column, the RTX 5080 from MSI, and then finally on the far right is the RTX 5090, which is also a Founders Edition card. 
And I'll point out once more that there is no 5070 Ti. I don't have one at the moment. As soon as I get one, I will make some room and we'll get the numbers in there. But looking at all of these numbers, uh, the 5070 again scales right where I would expect it to. I'm sure the 5070 Ti would be right in between the 5070 and the 5080. There's plenty of room there, as you can see, uh, to put a whole different set of numbers, again, that scales right in between those two cards. And here's where I really notice the difference when you turn the DLSS 4 on and the frame generation on, set everything to the max. Uh, that's where these 50 series cards really shine. And I know some people will argue, well, those aren't really real frames. Those are fake frames. And I get it, but do I really care when I'm in the middle of a game uh, and it's really running smoothly and I'm enjoying the game? Am, am I going to worry about which frames are real and which frames aren't? It works. So there's some subjectivity in there. Uh, I know that I personally wouldn't lose any sleep over it. And now I've got the Procyon benchmarks up. This is from the AI text generation benchmark. Uh, you can see I compared the 5090, 5080, and 5070 together. And at the bottom there, I just threw in the 4090 and 4070 just for reference. So you can sort of see how the numbers have scaled uh, between the two generations. Okay, so let's talk pricing. Uh, we've already seen the 5090. It's coming in right at $19.99, call it $2,000. 5080 is half of that at $999 or $1,000. The 5070 Ti, again, I haven't seen one yet, but it's $749 versus the 5070 at $549. So you've got a $200 difference between the 5070 and the 5070 Ti. Now the million dollar question is, is the 5070 worth the money? Again, $549 versus the next step up, which is $749. And these are Founders Edition cards. Uh, as soon as your people like Asus and Gigabyte and MSI start pushing out their versions, uh, the pricing kind of floats all over the place. But this sort of gives you a good frame of reference. Performance-wise, yeah, there's a significant improvement over a card like uh, if you've got an older card, a 980 or a 1070. Uh, this is a huge jump, uh, the 5070, from there. So this would be a good choice if... Uh, you need this level of performance and you're ready for that type of an upgrade. Now, for a little more money, again, there's the 5070 Ti uh, and, of course, the 5080. And then uh, really, <laughs> really going overboard is the 5090, which really, for most people, that's going to be uh, a lot of overkill. And for me personally, the sweet spot has always been uh, the 5070, 5070 Ti, 5070 Super. Uh, I think that's probably where you're going to get the most bang for your buck for most people. And you've got all the uh, performance improvements that the 50 Series brings. You've got the DLSS 4, you've got Ray Tracing, Reflex 2, uh, a whole slew of RTX games now that are coming out all the time. So you'll see driver updates that uh, allow the new games to take advantage of what the 50 Series has to offer. And again, the improvements um, on the 50 series over the 40 series, uh, they are there. They are noticeable. Are they at the level that NVIDIA says? Maybe. It, it just sort of depends on what you're comparing. So if you've already got a 40 series card, is it really worth it to make the upgrade to a 50? Uh, the argument is not quite as strong as if you've got a 20 or a 30 series. But you know, if you're building a brand new system, it may be time to uh, sell off the 40 series and move up to a 50 series. And for reference from 2012, here is an old GTX 670. And when this came out, it was $399. Again, 2012, $399. So overall, I really like the 5070. I think it does what it's supposed to do. It fits right in the price point where I would expect a card at this level to be. We will see the water get a little muddy when we get the other variations, uh, when the 5060 drops, uh, if there's a 5060 Ti, if there's a 5070 Super, 5070 Ti Super, all those different variations tend to struggle to find uh, where each one really hits the sweet spot in terms of performance for price. So I would give this card the Overclockers Club Gold Award. 
This is Chris with Overclockers Club. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe.